Welcome back. Rob Port in for Jay Thomas. 701-293-9000-888-970-9329. Or you can tweet me at Rob Port during the program. I uh, I posted last night on SayAnythingBlog.com a link to an article. It was posted on the Huffington Post. It was cross-posted from uh, something called the Desmog Blog, uh, which is a uh, sort of a, a left-wing environmentalist uh, website, I, I think is the right term for it, that, um, you know, they're, they're very anti-fossil fuel. Anyway, they, uh, they filed a bunch of open records requests and have put together, connected the dots on what they think is a scandal surrounding the visit to North Dakota recently by uh, former general, former CIA director David Petraeus. And um, they're uh, basically they said that the trip was stage managed uh, by uh, Mr. Petraeus, who currently works for Kohlberg, Kravis and Roberts. They're a private equity firm uh, that does business in North Dakota. And and I think they're probably looking to do some more business uh, with the state of North Dakota. And uh, they uh, they they thought that the, the trip was staged managed by his firm. Uh, They were upset that that Treasurer Kelly Schmidt flew in a private airplane owned by the firm, uh, and they also, uh, you know, said that basically North Dakota leaders rolled out the red carpet for these guys, and it kind of fits in with a lot of what we're hearing about North Dakota. And I talked about it earlier in the program how frustrating it is that that because of I I think for very partisan ideological political reasons, a lot of people are sort of trashing North Dakota now, and I think it's unfortunate whether it's it's painting Western North Dakota like it's now this this petrochemical wasteland which is just not true it's still a wonderful place to go and visit and it will continue to be that way for generations to come um or it's 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 you know trying to to portray our state government as corrupt and in the pocket of big oil which and i just don't think the facts bear it out there's always room for criticism but i i think a lot of these narratives are being shaped for political reasons anyway i wanted to have on the program treasurer schmidt to respond to this story and to talk about it and kelly thanks for the time first of all thank you for having me rob the um i'm I'm sure you've seen the article by now uh i know that that much of the uh the records were obtained through a a open records request to your office and other places um it was written by a gentleman by the name of steve horn Uh, he's he's described as a research fellow for the desmog blog and one of the one of the accusations or i guess points of his his piece was that general petraeus's trip to north dakota was was staged managed by his firm and and one of the things that they pointed out was a press release sent out by your office was actually written by kkr uh colberg kravis and roberts what's your response to that well the general and I had an opportunity to meet last December at a state treasurer's meeting that I attended in New York. And at the time when we met, um, we had some commonalities in the fact that I have two sons and a daughter-in-law wearing a Navy uniform. And we visited about our family and, and our military service and his, of course. And at that time, I had invited him to North Dakota. And I said, General, if you would ever like to come to North Dakota and see what we are doing to help create an energy independent nation, I would love to host you. And so, not believing you're thinking that anything would come to fruition, you know, a month or two later, I get a phone call saying that he would like to come and visit. So, we worked collaboratively um, with KKR to set things up. When you're working with someone who has the caliber and, in some cases, security issues that I may not be aware of or my staff. Um, we always work together with with the staff of someone who's coming to visit or someone of his caliber. So to have them create a, a press release was not something unusual. So basically, they created the press release. I'm sure you looked at it, you approved it, and you know you, you sent it out. and And I saw the press release. I mean, it was basically just it was you know kind of the who, what, when, where, why of of General Petraeus visiting the state. Uh, one thing that they mentioned was that. General Petraeus was was sort of kept from the media while he was here in the state, and and that seemed a little ridiculous to me. Uh, I know, for instance, on a, on another radio station in the state, he did an hour long interview. Uh, as a matter of fact, I I spoke with the host 
uh, of the program, Steve Bakken, uh, before the show, and he was telling me, yeah, the, you know, it was it was not choreographed, it was not scripted. He came on, we had we had a great time. We t- we spoke for an hour. It was a very in depth discussion. Uh, I know he was interviewed by by people from newspapers in the state. So the idea that he was kept from the media doesn't pass a smell test. But but one thing that they mentioned was that um, forum forum communications reporter Amy Dalrymple had had contacted your office to confirm if General Petraeus was visiting and the firm told you not to confirm it to her or or to ignore her phone call. Describe that situation for us. Well, Amy did contact my office and I was not in when she called. And part of the reason that we wanted to contain um, the visit was, number one, we didn't want it to become something it was never intended to be. And that being said, um, most people are familiar with the indiscretion that the general had and its relationship to North Dakota. And I was concerned that this would take on legs and it would end up being something that none of us wanted to see happen. The other side of it is this was not a big hub lub meeting. This was a, a group of local leaders, both in Williston and Watford City, area volunteers. I mean, we had folks that, that have volunteered their time as emergency responders and farmers and ranchers and people from the area that were able to share with the general what it's really like without any fluff or out without feeling um, intimidated or without having, you know, the press in the room, per have you. This was just sitting around at a table and, and having a, a good North Dakota conversation. And that was my big thing is I did not want this to become something it was never intended to be. I'm, I'm reading, this is a quote from, from an email that you sent to KKR. You said, my staff just received a press call from Fargo Forum reporter in Williston uh, calling to confirm the Petraeus visit on Tuesday. We didn't confirm or deny, but took Amy's number. How would you like to respond? And KKR revised you against returning her calls. Now, now I understand, and, and this was one area of concern to me. I believe what, what your office ultimately told her uh, was that... Um, you know, anyone who could confirm or deny it was out of the office at the time. Do you regret that? I was out of the office at the time. Okay. And, and so I, I was out of the office. I was not available at the time, and I was actually in a meeting texting with my staff at the time that the call came in, and that's when I made the email. So I, I wasn't available to make a phone call at the time it was requested. Okay. So so that's – that's uh, and, and, and you you felt like you couldn't – you know, just just make a comment confirming or denying that to to the reporter. Just just saying well, I, we, we can't we can't confirm or deny that. I'm sorry, I, I worded that awkwardly. Saying that 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 you just can't confirm or deny that he's coming to the state. You couldn't have just made that statement. I suppose, Rob, I I could have made the statement, but then would it have been appropriate for everyone else that we we should have sent out a press advisory at that point? If we're going to open it up to one, we should open it up to all. Here's here's another thing. Uh, another one of their points was that you flew in a private airplane owned by KKR, and I, I I'm assuming, and this this was sort of my take about it, and and you cleared this with a state legal counsel where they signed off on it, saying there's no conflict of interest. It's okay. Why why were you in the airplane? Well, first of all, I I know the ethics policy of both the State Investment Board and the Land Board, and I follow it very, very carefully. And because I felt that there would probably be an extra level of scrutiny relating to this event, I made sure I had something in writing, and also KKR requested that we have something in writing. Um, The fact is, the airplane was not owned by KKR. They leased the airplane. There were four seats in it, three of which were occupied by General Petraeus and two of his staffers. There was one seat vacant, which I filled in that seat, and it was convenient for me to do so in an effort for us to get back to Bismarck so I could accompany him at the event that we had at the Armory for our North Dakota military. So essentially both you and, and Mr. Petraeus were, were going to the same events in the state, and it was just convenient to travel together. Is that a fair assessment? That's correct. There were no extra accommodations made for me whatsoever. What would the alternative have been if you hadn't been able to fly in his airplane? How would you have addressed that situation? 
I would have driven back in a state fleet, which was the same state fleet that I drove out there, and I would have missed the evening events with the gentleman that I had asked to come to North Dakota. And the cost of your return trip probably would have been borne by the taxpayers. That's correct. Uh, the other the other question is that KKR wants to be in business with North Dakota, and there was communications with some of our investment officials in the state between KKR and some insinuation that uh, – you know, this was this was the state rolling out the red carpet for this this organization. What are your responses to that? Well, I'll tell you, Rob. This is not uncommon to have people come to North Dakota and visit with folks from the from the Retirement and Investment Office of the Land Department relating to an opportunity to do business with North Dakota. And I would also um, like to add that I will do everything I can to continue to bring people of General Petraeus's cali- um, caliber. Um, and, and bring North Dakota to the forefront because I truly believe that we need to have these type of quality investors come into our state and invest in our housing and in some of our infrastructure needs so that bringing our United States of America to an energy independent status does not fall on the backs of North Dakotans. We need help. We need people to come in, as KKR has done. They've done a multi-million dollar housing facility in Williston, which is completely unrelated to the State Investment Board or any investments. There's no North Dakota dollars in that investment itself. But we need to continue to do what we can to bring people to the state that can elevate this and show that this is not going to end anytime soon, and we need assistance in developing our infrastructure. Our taxpayers cannot foot the bill for all of this. What do you think motivated this this report? Because obviously, the people who produced it and and a lot of the places where it's being recycled around uh, on the internet and and again, it's it's left wing sources. And and personally, I kind of feel like their big problem is that a we're talking about Republicans and or big business or big oil industry people. I, I kind of feel like that's their problem. But what are your thoughts on why? I mean, why, why are they making an issue out of this? Um, I can't speak for that. I'd never heard of this blog until, until this came up. All I can say is it's very disappointing because we are trying to do the very best that we can here in North Dakota, and there's always going to be someone that's going to second-guess or look for something wrong with what we've intended, and and we can't do anything about that. We can just continue to plug along and do what we need to do and, and continue to follow our ethics and our laws and our rules, and that's exactly what happened in this situation. Kelly, I want to thank you for your time. My pleasure, and I just want to take one minute before we hang up. Sure. It's Memorial Weekend, yeah. and I know everyone is out there and enjoying the long weekend and enjoying the, the weather, but I just want to make sure we don't forget what this weekend is all about, and that's to say thank you to the families that support those that have given and paid their lives for the freedoms that we take for granted. Well said. I appreciate the time. Thank you, Rob. Take uh, care. State Treasurer Kelly Schmidt, 701293 Nine thousand eight 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 nine seven zero nine three two nine. If you want to read the whole story, I've got it linked at sayanythingblog.com. You can check it out there. I'm Rob Port sitting in for Jay Thomas. We'll be back right after this.